So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I mean, I do say that in almost every video, <laughs> but this is quite different. And it's about how to make thumbnails like mine for YouTube. Um, if you go through my channel, you can see that there is a pretty consistent style in most of them. So as you can see, this one or that one where I have the person in the foreground, kind of a colored background and then the title. And it's exactly that I'm going to be teaching you. I have a pretty good structure and streamline the process and I'm pretty happy with my thumbnail. Uh, it took a while and I've learned a lot along the way, but I'm happy with where it is now. And basically I'm going to be teaching you how to make those thumbnails using Krita, which is an open source, completely free software. Um, but even if you have something else that you prefer to use, most of the things I'm going to be teaching you would be common in most photo editing or illustrating um, kind of softwares. So you're free to, of course, use the tips that I give you in any software. I'm Tassiani and you're watching TJTV. So we'll get started then. So first things first is, as I said, I'm using Krita. So if you just want to Google that in, um, K or you get to this website and then you can just download it here. Once you've downloaded it, then I have it open here. What I want to do is create a new file. So we're going to go to File, New or Control N. And these are the dimensions that are the best for a YouTube thumbnail. So it's uh, 1,280 pixels by 720 and that's the standard uh, HD size for the thumbnail and we'll create it. Cool. So we get this, it's just a plain white background. Um, when you're setting it up, you really don't need that background. I usually end up deleting it anyway, but I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do then is get my photo. So I already decided on the main thumbnail photo that I want. Um, personally, you can take photos if you'd like. I also, because I find it easier with, since I'm filming, is I just take kind of a screenshot on my computer or save um, a photo frame of that video. And then I pick from that, from the video a frame that I would like to have be the main thumbnail. So what I'm gonna do once I just have the photo open, the folder with the photo open, I'm just gonna drag it across and insert as a new layer. What you can also do is file open um, and from that document drag it in. Uh, this is just the way I do it. There's always multiple ways of doing things. I'm just showing you how you do it, how I do it, sorry. Um, so I'm going to press Ctrl T, which is transform. Otherwise, you can also click on this button, um, which is transform a layer or selection. Using shift to keep the same dimensions, I am going to sh shrink um, until it's about the size I would like and it fits on the screen nice. Cool, and it's gonna press enter. So that's it, what we're gonna do. Then the next step is, because I like to have the people in the foreground, is I have to select them. So what I go is, to the bottom tools, there's a uh, selection tools. So depending on what kind of object you have, you can use the rectangular, the circular, the pol Polygonal, polygonal, I don't know, uh, or the jelly bean one, that's the outline selection tool. And if you just had a white background, easier ways to use um, the contig contiguous selection tool, contiguous, I don't know, just the little wand. Okay, so I've been using most often this polygonal selection tool, just because if you do have a surface pen, you can use the... Um, outline selection tool, it's easier, you can just draw outside, um, but my one's out of battery, so, you know, and I'm teaching you how to use your mouse. So what we're going to do is zoom in, so either just use your mouse to zoom in, otherwise click on the zoom in button. I'm also going to press A, which means if you go to the tool options, the A is selecting the add, which is, so it's a shortcut for add, so that means if I, let's say, select this bit, right? Then when I go select something else, they're just adding to it. It just means that I don't have to make just one shape and get it perfect. I just do it bit by bit. So what I'm going to do is I just go and outline like the, the bits that I want. So for me, it's the people. Um, yep. Yeah, so I'm just going to quickly do that. 
And this photo is not the best because it's three separate people and that can take a little bit of time. But the facet, you, like you get fast at it and also if you have like a surface pen or something, it might be quicker. Yeah, so it just creates a shape. That's not what we wanted, but I just kind of just select the outline you want and then kind of create a shape from that. So I can just go to this. Uh, oh, okay. okay, and if you do make a mistake like me, if it just clicks off into a random place, just press Ctrl Z and you'll delete the last thing you've done. That's why I like doing it in small chunks because I know I'm going to make little mistakes here and there. But also, if you do have a problem, what we can do is, as soon as you just click it and finish it off, then you can go into the subtract. So in the tools option where it's the add, you can also press subtract and the shortcut is S. Then exactly what we're doing, you just go in the area that you don't want selected and you just click, yeah, you just make a shape on that side of it. Okay, cool. So I now have all of us selected. So what I'm going to do is right click and I'm going to copy selection to new layer. Okay, so if I go to my layers, I should have now the, the background and then just the layout where I've selected everything. The first thing I do once I'm at this point is press Ctrl S to save or file save as. And you can just save it however you want. Um, and we're going to save as a critter file. And that's with anything you do in the computer. You have to get in the habit of just like pressing save all the time because things crash, you know, computers just mess up for, you know, for no reason. So throughout this whole process, remember control S with anything you do. Okay. So while everything's still selected, I am going to go on, right click again, go to transform and grow selection. I like to grow it to around about three pixels. So that's just what I do, again, play around with it, do what you like. Then I go again, right click, transform and border selection. And because we've grown about three and we still want it to be the outline of the people, so I'm gonna border it exactly the same three pixels. Okay, so then I have my border. What I'm gonna do is just so I can see how it looks, I'm going to um, click on not seeing that layer, so the little eye button next to the white background, if you have a white background. I am then gonna go into the fill tool. So that's a little bucket icon. icon. I'm gonna make sure that the color that I want to fill it with is on the foreground of the color. So right on the top, I want a white and that's what it is. So then I go to anywhere really, and as long as it's in between the lines, and I'm going to click on it. Sometimes like the white is a little bit transparent some places, so I just double click, but it looks to be pretty good. So that's it. Then what I'm gonna do from that is just, I don't want the outline anymore. I'm sure there's various ways of doing it. What I found is using the one tool again and just clicking out of it works the best for me. Okay, so I'm gonna make the layer visible again. And as you can see now, there is the white um, outline around it. So then what I do next is I then use the um, uh, colored background or the, you know, background with like with the white background, but you can just create a new layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it to the front just so that I can color it. Another way of doing it is again, making the others not visible. I'm going to go back to my fill or bucket tool and I'm going to pick a color. So today, so I'm going to go on that little color button. So in the white and I just pick on any color that I would like for the main color to be. I think I'll just do a red and so I click on that and I press okay. Now what I'm going to do is just going to fill that layer. 
Cool, simple. Go back to our um, select tool, make everything visible again, and I'm gonna drag that layer between my the selected kind of foreground one I want and then the background. And so sometimes I just leave it like this if I have a cool background I want and I just leave it behind the people and I hide completely the background, but other times I kind of just want the background. So when I do want that, I wanna make sure that the opacity of my completely filled background is down. So I go here to the opacity on the layers um, section and I just bring it down. And as you bring it down, you can see how it looks and you can kind of choose, you know, how much you want. Right now it's about, you know, 61, it looks good, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, then the next thing I do, which I don't do for all videos, but I quite like as well, is I'm gonna make a border around it. So what I'm gonna do is go on to select on the um, square rectangle tool, and I'm gonna go to the tool options and it's just easy if you do it this way, like beforehand you work it out so you don't have to um, edit anything. And yeah, so once I made a new layer, make sure you make a new layer everything because then it's much easier to edit. Okay, so then I am going to make sure that there is not filled and that there is an outline brush. So the brush, the outline. I will then go back here and choose the color I would like. So. You know what, I haven't done a black one with the red, so I'm gonna do black. Then I look at the size, and the size of that brush, so the size right here actually means also the width of that outline. So it, right now it's on 40, I don't even know how it looks like, I assume it's how I'm used to it. I'm just gonna drag right from the corner on, the, on any side and to the other side, completely to the opposite corner, and I'm gonna let go. And there you go, we have the border. If you didn't like kind of that width and you want it a bit thinner or anything, you just go Ctrl Z or undo and we're gonna make it a bit thinner You by dragging this bit, dragging the size, the scale or size pixels and then you just go again. And then just keep going until you're happy with it. Okay, then next comes again, remember to save it. Next we're gonna make a new layer, but I'm pretty sure if you just once you're making text, it automatically makes a new layer, but just to be safe. Then we're going to go to the little T icon, which is a text tool. We're going to make it about the size of the thumbnail, and we're going to write whatever we want. So, creating TikTok viral. Okay, then I select it all, and I just change the font to whatever I want. Um, and click save and then save you can kind of see how it's looking we can also change the color so i'm gonna make it maybe white and click save again and we can see it i know it's a little bit big for me so i'm gonna make it smaller and i'm gonna close it so once i close it once I, and i want to move the text around i go back to the little arrow tool or the selection tools and i can move it around okay what I also like to do is to have an outline just so on the letter so it's easy to read. So with the selection tool clicked on, I clicked on the text and I go to tool options. Now there's a straight line, a line icon. So I click on that and that's that means the outline. So right now it's clicked on no fill. So what I'm gonna do is solid color fill. Right now it's white, so I click on the little color, the strip, and I choose the color that I would like. So I'm gonna keep it with black. And then that's it. So that's it for the text. Cool. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I like adding little pictures to it, anything that will capture people's attention. So with that, if you want free pictures that there's no copyright issues, there's quite a few websites you can Google. I personally use Pixabay. There's a lot of illustrations that I find are good. So maybe I'll just search for dancing and I'm gonna click here on illustrations just for my style. Just click on it, click on any that you like and you go free download. Ugh. I much prefer it when it's already a PNG with no background, 
But hey, now I gotta show you how to remove the background, so that's fine. And the same thing that we did with the original photo, we're gonna do with this one. We're just gonna drag across. Again, I'm gonna drag onto my critter and insert as a new layer. You can also insert as a new file layer, so that just be a new file, and then you have to drag it across. I just put everything in one, it's so much easier. Again, press Ctrl T to transform so you can change sizes. And because we're gonna remove the uh, white background, the way I do it, you gotta make sure that the whole thing is visible on the frame just for the next steps we're gonna do, then you can alter the size how you'd like. Again, there's lots, multiple ways of doing this. This is just how I do it for my thumbnails, the quickest way I found that works for me. So, because I wanna remove white background and just of that image and it's on top of my existing thumbnail and I haven't done the new file way, what I do first is actually make everything not visible so that whatever I do to that picture, it doesn't alter the rest. Then I'm gonna use the little wand tool and I'm gonna click on the white background. Oh no, he has, they have white shirts. That is so annoying, but okay, we're gonna subtract the white shirts and hopefully it works. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is with that selected, we're gonna click delete on your computer. For some reason, it didn't delete the whole thing, so I'm just gonna press it a few times. Yeah, all the white's gone. Again, just click outside somewhere and it's not selected anymore. We go back to our layers section and just make everything visible again. And that's a super quick way of taking, getting rid of white backgrounds. Um, then Ctrl T to transform however way you want. I'm just gonna maybe put it on the edge here. And then on top of that, I want the TikTok logo. So again, I'm gonna search for it. Paste. So I just con I copy it and I'm gonna paste. Okay, so I'm just gonna Control T again and transform it, put it about here. Cool, and that's gonna be my thumbnail. So what I do now, everything's good. Then I go to File, Save As, or you can apparently press Control Shift S either way. And we're going to, you can write whatever title you want. And here our save as type, we're gonna go down to, you can either choose maybe a JPEG or PNG. I'm gonna save as a PNG. And we're gonna press Save. Then this is going to come up and we want the file to be large file size just because we want the best quality. And then we just go, okay, and it's saved. It's really quick to save, and voila, that is my thumbnail that I'm going to put. So that is how I make my thumbnail. It is pretty simple once you get the hang of it, um, but I'm pretty happy with how it all looks on my channel. It's really about creating your own style and being consistent so that people know that it's your video. But you can do, most of the tips I've taught in this video, you can use in a lot of different software. I'd love to know what software you use. I know that Canva is quite popular because I wanted to develop my own style and have a bit more liberty with it. That's why I'm using Krita, which is a bit more advanced. And then leave also a comment down below on what else that you would like to learn about YouTube. Um, I'd love to help out more because I've had a lot of time to learn, a lot of trial and error, and I'm still always learning and still always trying to see how I can do new things um, you know, to make my videos the most interesting as possible. But I'd love to share the knowledge that I do have and help you guys out. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I do make a lot of challenges um, and fun videos that I personally really enjoy and it's all about laughing and finding joy in your day. So hopefully they will make your day better. And also I look forward to helping you out more. So if there's any other tips videos that I can do, I will do that. So subscribe to keep up with it. Um, and hit that notification button. I post new videos every week, so I will see you next week. Bye!